Hello, now I'm going to show the, the main model of the quiz tutor. So the best way to do it is to use a very convenient functionality of IntelliJ where it can show you the domain model from the code. So it actually corresponds actually <coughs> to the code. So, so to enable this, you just need to so the project is open here. Um, you need to select persistence and you have in in entity manager factory. This is actually related with GPA that we'll learn later. But um, now it's really, really helpful to show you what is to show an ent entity relationship diagram of the persistent entities in your code. So let's select this and it just present you. There are different ways to look at it, so different layouts. So I'm gonna choose this layout. Okay, so that's it. Another thing that you can do is this ent entity relationship. So to see the multiplicities, you can go there and show edge labels. Okay, so you need to know that um, actually when you show entity relationship so the multiplicities usually are not in the same position that you have whenever you have a UML diagram but uh, so be aware of that so let's look at the central entity or the I would say the top entity which is course so course basically it's an entity that has an ID and we'll see IDs in all the entities just because they are the key the internal key of the database so they are not relevant from a semantic point of view so what is relevant here is the name. So the course has a name and this name basically corresponds to software engineering or software architecture, so to a particular course. So we'll have an instance of this entity for each one of the courses that uh, are using the uh, quiz tutor. But you should be aware that actually this course is different from an execution course. So actually a course is related with many execution courses. And the execution course, the course execution, and the course execution is actually the current instance of the course during a particular semester. And the attributes are academic term, acronym, and status. So this information actually comes from Phoenix, so the, 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 the tutor system interacts with Phoenix to get this information and store it, it here. Okay, and the status is the ability to have a course that is not active. Actually, the courses that are not active uh, corresponds to the period before the, the teacher decides them to, to be included in the, to be used by the system. Now, let's see the one of the top entities that is related with course, we'll see that we have many topics. So this means, and if you have seen already the functionalities, is that, that these topics are shared by all the executions of the course. So it means that if you have software engineering and you define all these topics, in the next semester or in the next year, we can use it for the new, the, the new uh, execution of the course. So they are reusable in some sense. And the same happens to the questions. So the topic has only in one name and question has a little bit more of information which is the content, so it is the question itself and then you have the creation date, a unique identifier of the, the, the question that sometimes is relevant from the point of view of uh, migration of data and then you have the number of answers for these. This is, these are calculated attributes but uh, they are here for a matter of performance and the number of correct answers for this question. So it's an easy way to very quickly, you, you can calculate the, the difficulty of a question. Then you have a question can have one image in the case where you have an image. So, and another thing is that the question can have four currently, so is for options so there are the options and then you have a sequence a name of the, uh, the the sequence so the position of the option in the question and you have whether this is the correct question or not okay which option is the correct answer okay now we have we have another 
thing relevant here is that this topic conjunction related to the assessment and basically these entities are related with this assessment that you see, assess, assessment uh, concept that you see in the interface and that basically aggregate different topics according to a disjunction and a conjunctions so that we can basically select what type of uh, question should appear uh, during a, per uh, a period of the semester for the students to, 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 to answer the questions according to that uh, assessment. Now moving a little bit down and focusing around the course execution, we, you can see that assessments and quizzes are actually occur actually in the context of uh, course execution. So contrarily to the, the, the questions we are reused from year to year, the quizzes belong to a particular execution of the course. Uh, well, that was the decision from the design point of view, and basically it's because we do not want to reuse quizzes. Quizzes are very easy to build, and so it's not necessary to reuse quizzes. Of course, the quiz question occurs in the context of the quiz. So it's an entity that actually uh, describes which questions, so which questions, which particular questions are in the quiz. So you have the sequence, which is the position in the quiz. And the quiz, you have the attributes that we have already have seen in the functionality about available date, conclusion date, creation date, so on, if the questions are scrambled or not. So we have all this type of information. Finally, let's focus from the user perspective. And so you have the user entity that actually corresponds to both teachers and um, students, and you distinguish them by the role. And the user has a many-to-many -many relationship with close, uh, with the course execution. So it means that a user can attend or teach several course executions, and a course execution, of course, can have several teachers and several students. Now, when a student answers a quiz, we create a quiz answer that has, has the information about when is when did he answer and if it was a complete answer or not okay and then this quiz answer has the set of question answers that is the particular contain the particular response that the student gave to the question that is in the quiz and of course this points to the option to the correct option so that we can afterwards uh, know if it is if the the student uh, uh, gave the correct answer or not. So I think this is the model that you have to learn to start. It's not really complex, although you need to know them know it in order to start designing your own model and designing the how we're going to uh, extend extend it in order to support your functionality. Okay. So good work.